Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about integration by long division and completing the square. Two things that will come up um, as you are trying to find the antiderivative of a function. So first of all, long division, why would we need to do it? Well, sometimes there's not any kind of uh, simplification that can be done with a quotient that you're given and you're asked to find the antiderivative of. So long division is a, is a good approach when that happens. So something like 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x plus 1 over x minus 2, you can't really find the antiderivative of that just by looking at it because x minus 2 can't be factored out of the top and the top isn't the derivative of x minus 2. So if I rewrite it like 6x squared plus 8x plus 23 plus 47 over x minus 2, then I can find the antiderivative of it just term by term and get 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 23x plus 47 times the natural log of x minus 2 plus c. So that's what we're trying to do with this. Um, so let's look at an example. I've got 6x squared minus 2x minus 5 over x minus 1. So I'm going to actually use long division to write that in another way. Uh, to do that, I look at the x at the beginning and the 6x squared at the beginning of the inside, and I notice that x goes into 6x squared 6x times. And so I write that at the top. I multiply the entire divisor, x minus 1, by 6x, and I get 6x squared minus 6x. Um, instead of subtracting that, just to avoid a mistake, I'm going to add the opposite. So when I do that, either way, when I do that, I'm going to get 4x, and then I bring down the minus 5, which is the next term. And then I do the same thing. I look at x, and I look at 4x, and I know that x goes into 4x four times. So I write that up top, multiply 4 by the entire divisor, and get 4x minus 4. Remember to add the opposite, and that will get me... Uh, minus 1. There are no more terms to divide, so negative 1 is my remainder. That goes over what I was dividing by to begin with, which is x minus 1. So I can rewrite this question as the antiderivative of 6x plus 4 minus 1 over x minus 1. And that's a lot easier to do. I'll get 3x squared plus 4x minus the natural log of x minus 1 plus c. All right, let's look at an, at an example where we've got um, definite integrals. So the same process, I'm going to divide 2x squared minus x plus 7 by x plus 1. So I look at the x, I look at the 2x squared, x goes into 2x squared 2x times, I multiply the entire divisor by 2x, and I get 2x squared plus 2x, add the opposite of that, and I get negative 3x, and then I will bring the plus 7 down, so that I can look at the x at the front and then the negative 3x. x goes into negative 3x negative 3 times. I multiply the entire divisor by negative 3 and I get negative 3x minus 3. Add the opposite of that and I get 10. That's my remainder because there's no terms left. And so at the end I've got 10 over x minus or x plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this question as 2x minus 3 plus 10 over x plus 1 and I'm going to find the antiderivative. That's going to be x squared minus 3x plus 10 times the natural log of x plus 1. If I plug in 4, I'm going to get 16 minus 12 plus 10 times the natural log of 5. And if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 4 minus 6 plus 10 times the natural log of 3. Then with a little bit of algebra and some log rules, that simplifies to be 6 plus 10 times the natural log of 5 thirds. Now, completing the square is another strategy that you might use. Why would we ever want to use it? Well, sometimes um, we have some integrands that will work out to be arctan or arcsine when you take the antiderivative. So if we've got a square in there, we want to complete that square and make it as solvable as possible. So something like 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 5, I really don't know just by looking at that what the antiderivative is. But if I change it to 1 over 1 plus x minus 2 squared, I know that the antiderivative of that is just going to be arctan of x minus 2 plus c. So let's do an example of this. Um, let's say I have 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 13. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the x squareds and the x's in parentheses and leave any constants outside. So I need to complete the square that is in the parentheses. And to do that, I take half of the number that's by the x 
and then I square it. So the number by the x is four, half of that is two, square that and I get four again. So I have one over x squared plus four x plus four. But if I randomly add four somewhere, I have to subtract four somewhere else so I don't change the question completely. That's why the negative four appears after the 13 in the denominator as well, just to balance things out and not change the question. So simplifying things a little bit, I get uh, one over x plus two squared plus nine. All right, and because there's a one in my formula for the derivative of arctan, then I need to change that nine into a one. And to do that, I'm gonna uh, pull out a one ninth, and that means I've got one over x plus two over three all squared plus one still inside the integral. And so the antiderivative of that is gonna be arctan x plus two over three over one third, keeping the one ninth in front. A little bit of algebra makes it look a little nicer, but that's the answer to that one. Uh, one third arctan x plus two over three plus c. So that's just a quick example of completing the square. Um, if you have any questions about any of these, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.